We have time for a few questions. If anybody's got one they'd like to ask, uh, Dave. Hey, Dave. How many, how many uh, organizations like C4GC and the organization you, uh, you, you lead, how many of them are in the state of North Carolina? We have identified right now roughly 169 different groups. Some of these are very small, and I mean eight or ten people. Um, they, they range from uh, even county GOP organizations that happen to be full of Tea Party people. And where I'm finding those in are in the predominantly Democratic counties, where the GOP has given up on having any organization in that county. They haven't won an election in the last 50, 60 years. So they give up. And Tea Party people are standing up and saying, hey, we got to do something. Well, the party just won't do it, we're going to do it. And, and we see that able to get out the vote. You know, GOP organization doesn't have a precinct level operation, we're going to build one. And, that, and that's what you're doing. But uh, there have been three counties in the last 90 days that have formed new Tea Party groups, and they're all up in the mountains. But it's still growing, it's, and it's going to continue to grow. And by May, who, who knows where we're going to be. Well, is that going to transform of these counties to where the uh, Tea Party groups are actually going to be the GOP party in that county? I mean, in some cases, yes, because I'm encouraging them to look for those opportunities to get involved with the party. I hear people say, well, you're never going to change the Republican Party. Well, folks, tell me, how is it that you can give up on changing the party and still think you can change government? That's true. Does that even make sense? No. And that's why I went and got on my Republican County Executive Committee. That you have to start somewhere. There are vacancies. If you bring enough people to the floor of your county commit convention, and any person registered as Republican in Gilbert County is entitled to go to that convention, and you have the same vote as everybody else, and you can be the most radical Tea Party person, but you still get to raise your hand and vote. And if you get people nominated for office, put, put them on the ballot, get in there and vote them before you know it, you got a Tea Party organization. Again, I say Tea Party. Tea Party is the fiscal conservative side of the house. I know as Republicans, that's where you're going to find the social conservatives lining up. Because when it comes to May or November, when you walk in the ballot box, it's going to be Republican or Democrat or Libertarian. There's only three parties that can be on the ballot in North Carolina. I, I have as many problems with the hierarchy in the GOP as anybody else. But I don't waste my time busting that. It's better to get involved and get active and change it. And you meet some of the nicest people along the way when you do. Any other questions? Like yes, ma'am. What was the name again of that institute or something? I'm battling it's called the, well, the Center for Creative Leadership oh, okay. is one of the host organizations that played a major role in helping found the Institute of Political Leadership. But it is, in fact, a separate nonprofit entity. But you will go through them. Yes, and the website is very easy, www.iopl.org, O-R-G. I-O-P-L, Institute of Political Leadership, I-O-P-L.org. They can certainly use your donations to keep those programs going, too. But C4GC wants your first donation. We want the first donation. Be willing to accept incremental victories. We, we didn't get in this position in the last year or two. You know, it's taken 50, 60 years. And it may take us another real eight or ten to really gain the strength back in our voice that, that we need. Don't get, let yourself get frustrated because it is going to be a long battle. And it is a battle that will pass to our kids. But it's a battle that can be won as long as we all stay in the fight. Was, what are we going to do if we lose the election in November? First question is, which election are we talking about? Obviously, if it's the presidential election. There's so many variables in that. The best insurance has nothing to do with the presidential election. It has to do with the congressional races. Are you shaking your head now? No, because he has circumvented Congress. Congress doesn't even matter anymore. He has, but 
It's a tough part. It's a tough point to argue. But if, he, if we have GOP control of both the House and the Senate, particularly at a sufficient level that they can override a veto, they can hamstring it. Now, he can do a lot through executive orders. But the one way that they can get him is to pull purse strings. They've got to quit funding him. I still don't think John Roberts has forgiven or forgotten the spanking that he gave the Supreme Court justices during the previous State of the Union address. There was a court case, I don't know how many of you know today, in Georgia to keep him off of the ballot in Georgia. And neither he nor his attorney showed up. Expect the judge to rule in the plaintiff's favor. That means to block him from access to the ballot. Barack Obama's name, in all likelihood, will not appear on the ballot in Georgia because he is not eligible to be president of the United States. Now, there's similar cases in Alabama and New Hampshire. So we've got three right now going forward. If any one of these succeeds, expect other states to follow suit. If you block him from the ballot in enough states, he can't, matter. He can't win the amount of house vote yet. And then it's automatically going to go to the GOP nominee. So those are the dynamics that you have to look at. It was a great question, Lynn, but I, again, if Obama wins, you know, people say, well, how in the world could you ever vote for Mitt Romney? I hope I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not endorsing anybody, by the way. My point is, I would rather spend the next four years fighting for my rights than fighting for my life. stand on principle. Ron Paul is the only person who can save this country. My representative in the North Carolina legislature, the same guy actually told me, wrote to me on Facebook and said that if I was not voting for Ron Paul, I was an enemy of this country, then on this destruction. <laughs> we don't get my vote this time. Actually, they redistricted him out of the seat because apparently he said a few similar things and kind of kicked off some people down the general assembly. Um, and, and that's just right. He's just right to his opinion. But I don't think that's the direction that we need to be going in personally. Um, and I'm not talking about the support for candidate. I'm talking about treating your constituents like that and, and showing that contempt for the uh, opinion of our fellow members. The other gentleman next to you got a question. Oh, uh, I, I, I thought it was Anyone else? <laughs> yes. I had a question. I read several articles lately that there's a chance that the Democrats may pull um, along the last minute and substitute Philip. The, the question was, if, is there a chance that the Democrats would pull Obama from the ticket at the last minute and nominate someone else like Hillary to run, and if so, what would that do to our strategy as far as Kansas? There's no way you could predict that. If we have the right message that resonates with the people of this country, if we can not only show them how our candidates offer a better future, but show them first why they should even care. Look at the voter turnout. The numbers are low. The majority of American people do not even participate in this process. We have to reach out to them and explain to them. I, the way I said it, I, I wrote a little thing. Um, I, had, I had considered reading it. I'd like to share it with you because it talks a little bit about what that one person's difference can make. I am the spirit of America. I'm the heart of every veteran who has ever fought for this country in or out of uniform. I know that my single shot cannot win the war, but I know that if I stand with my comrades and we all fire together in the same direction, we can be victorious, but only if we all stand together. I am the spirit of America. I know there's something greater than myself worth fighting for. I am North, South, East, and West. I am white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and yes, Native American. I am Protestant, Catholic, Jew, and atheist. I am the spirit of America. I know that above all, I can make a difference in the war because without my shot, the rest of my brethren face the enemy one shot short. 
I cannot ask them to stand up for me unless I am also willing to stand up for them. I am a free man and willing to pay the price to stay that way. I am the spirit of America. Now, that right there, what difference does any one shot make? I hope that explains it. Because if you don't have my vote, you're one vote short. If they don't have your vote, every single vote counts. And look at the troops lined up in the trenches and the foxholes. Any one of them could jump up out of that foxhole and run charging at the enemy and shoot that. They got every right to go kill the enemy. God, is that the smart thing to do? No. We need, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That one person can count, but he can multiply the effect of his count by sticking with all the others who are on the same team and everybody doing it together. I, I'm a big government progressive. Do you know that? When I made that statement on Facebook, that's exactly what I said. You're just promoting collectivism. No, my friends, I'm promoting unity. There's a reason we're called the United States and not the Associated States or, or whatever. And that's the unity that keeps us all together. I'm glad you found that here in Gilbert County. We just need to spread it. Yes, sir. As a 38 years before retirement as a professional fundraiser, very little money is raised by negative feelings. As I sit in this room and I spent the last five years watching Fox News, NBC, CBS, we all can sit down and cry on our beer, worry about what's going on, or we can all stand up and say, hey, quit watching that crap. Let's start forward thinking the idea of when you go out to ask people to help you in fundraising, if you don't ask, you don't get. So the bottom line is you may ask 100 people to help you work, vote, give money, or whatever, and maybe only 20 will work with you. But that's 20 more than you had before you went out. And the people that said no, eh, maybe they'll join a little later. If you keep a positive attitude and don't worry about whether Obama changes stripes in the stream, or whether uh, Newt is a good guy, or just let that thing happen. We have no control over that anyway until we vote here in this state. So until that time, we are worrying about the big picture and worry about our little big picture and start thinking positive instead of negative. Thank you. That, that's very important. Do not be afraid to tell your own story. You achieved successes here in Gilbert County in the 2010 election cycle. Don't undervalue that. People need to know because people are drawn to successful organizations. And the more they know that you're successful, the more likely they are to come to you. One of the best selling points of C4GC that I've seen, when I walked in that first meeting of the Panera Bread, and they had the three ring binders and all the folders for each committee and everything laid out. Folks, that level of organization told me everything I needed to know. People had a handle on what was going on. That's the kind of organization people want to join. You know, otherwise they'd just be sitting in a bar looking at a widescreen TV and watching Fox News. This is where the action is, and you set that groundwork. Take credit for it. Humbly so, yes, but take credit for it. And expand on it, because 2012 is going to be the next challenge. And what you do in 2012 is going to set the stage for what people are going to do in 2014 and beyond. It all matters. And I'm glad to know that you take it seriously. Yeah. Yes, sir? Oh, okay. Again, I thank you very much. I just want to recognize Dave's wife, Joanne, oh, back here in the back. <laughs> um, as, as Dave said, um, uh, we need your one shot. Or if you've got a double barrel, we need both. So um, in front of you, in front of you, Conservative for Gilbert County is all about action. We have this one frontline forum meeting. Uh, every month where we get together, it's, uh, it's relatively fun, uh, it's, it's really social, we get entertained a little, but the real action happens in small group levels, and, and in front of you, you've got this sheet, and we have a bunch of action teams uh, for in uh, Conservatives for Gifford County where you can actually get involved, participate, use some of the gumption that Dave was talking about in, in his presentation, and get involved to really make a difference. And we're going to hear from our team leaders now. Um, we're going to start with Pam Hansecker. 
uh, who is in charge of neighborhood networking. 